Welcome back to the latest episode of Environmental News, where you learn about the newest happenings on this planet. First up, after years of striving toward green investments, Apple, the company that brought the world the iPhone, has announced that it now runs on 100% renewable energy. More specifically, all of its retail stores, data centers, and corporate offices now operate on clean energy, and sources include solar technology, wind farms, and new concepts such as biogas fuel cells and microhydro generation systems. According to the press release, Apple currently has 25 operational renewable energy projects around the world, totaling 626 megawatts of generation capacity. Globally, the tech giant purchases a tradable commodity called Renewable Energy Certificates, which guarantee the cleanliness of an energy source. In addition, any new offices or plants run on renewables. One example is the newly constructed Apple Park headquarters in Cupertino, California, which has solar roofs that return energy to the public grid. Two years ago, the highly polluted Versova Beach in Mumbai, India, was the site of a massive volunteer cleanup operation that transformed the plastic trash dump into a more pristine coastline. Now, hatchlings from a vulnerable turtle species have been spotted for the first time in decades. Roughly 80 olive ridley turtles were seen climbing out of their nest toward the sea. The olive ridley species is the smallest and most abundant sea turtle species in the ocean, but is classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The organizer of the cleanup effort, Afroz Shah, has been leading volunteers in manually picking up rubbish from Versova Beach and teaching sustainable waste practices to local villagers. He remarked that beach cleanups definitely have a positive effect on nesting turtles, as they increase the number of major nesting sites. Nearly 1,000 years after Vikings destroyed the lush forests of Iceland, the island nation is taking up the enormous task of replanting the trees. When settlers first arrived in Iceland in the 9th century, up to 40% of the land area was covered with forests, but they were soon being cut down by Vikings for fuel and grazing space. The deforestation unfortunately resulted in massive soil erosion that in turn brings the threat of desertification of the island. But Iceland is certainly among the worst examples in the world of deforestation. Now the Icelandic Forest Service is introducing locally tailored non-native tree species, most of which are from Alaska, into Iceland woodlands. These kinds of mixed forests may improve Iceland's forest cover from the current 2% to 12% by 2100. The Environmental Defense Fund is planning to build a methane tracking satellite that could help fight climate change by monitoring the potent greenhouse gas from space. Methane is released from oil and gas operations as well as farms and wetlands, and the colorless, odorless gas is quite difficult to track in the air because it spreads, but that may change now. The satellite, called Methane SAT, is designed to detect methane emissions across the planet with pinpoint accuracy and high resolution to identify sources of leaks, which can help governments and industry coalitions work together to address the problem. According to Stephen Hamburg, a climate scientist at EDF, it will be able to see where it's happening and how much across the globe, not just the big sources, but all the sources collectively and understand the scale of the problem. The satellite is due to launch in about three years. An Atlantic Ocean current, often called the Great Conveyor Belt, that helps regulate global climate has slowed down to a 1,000 year low. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, exchanges warm water from the equator with cold water in the Arctic, thus playing a critical role in redistributing heat. According to two new studies published in the scientific journal Nature, this overturning has probably weakened over the last 150 years. An influx of fresh water from melting ice caps in Greenland stops the current from forming dense waters, which disrupts the ocean's circulation. Although scientists disagree on what the exact causes of this are, some are concerned that the AMOC current could be shut down altogether. As a result, ocean ecosystems such as coral reefs and deep sea sponge grounds would be severely impacted. That's all the news for this week's episode. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. See you soon.